Hi folks, Astronomy Live here, back one more time for a video on SDO. I thought we were going to be done with this, but after seeing WSO's latest video, I just couldn't resist. In it, he claims that the moon was much smaller from the perspective of SDO back in 2007. That's right, I said 2007. Now, if you're familiar with the various solar observatories, you can probably already see what's wrong with that statement, as well as something else that's wrong with this picture. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's see what WSO says in their latest video. Difference in the moon size. The SDO? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dun, so, dun, here's dun, our friend dun, back again. Dun. Do you want to, do you have that pulled up? I, I could pull that up instantly, and I can't wait to smear it in my, all my trolls' faces. What I was really excited to show you guys was sometimes NASA just doesn't clean up all their images. This was a lunar transit from 2007. So just to be clear, just to reiterate, he's claiming this image comes from SDO. Do you see what's wrong with this picture? Two things. First of all, SDO was launched in 2010. That's right, 2010, three years after this image was taken. SECI, you see it down there at the bottom right corner of the image, designates an instrument suite which is only present on the stereo spacecraft, both stereo ahead and stereo behind. This particular image comes from stereo behind in February of 2007, shortly after it left the Earth-Moon system, and on the way out, the moon happened to cross the sun while it was quite far from the moon and Earth, much farther than SDO, which orbits Earth at geosynchronous distance. So just to show you guys, here's the page about SDO's launch, and you can see that the launch occurred in February of 2010, about three years after that image was taken. Now let's see what else WSO has to say about it. My, the moon has grown. <laughs> now, now, Steve, you do have one that where we took all the heat, right? I do. Um, I do. One that we took it in the shorts about. And NASA came out with a special press release and said, this is the moon and this is the Earth. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, and... unless NASA says it, I mean, that's just like God, you know, announcing it. Well, once again, it wasn't just NASA saying it. Using observations from my own telescope, I was able to predict that that eclipse did occur and that it was a double eclipse between the Earth and Moon, as covered in previous videos here on this channel. So, let me see. I, I just want to put this on the record, gentlemen. So, they were trying to hand our butts to us, uh, explaining to us that the reason why you see this is that it's because of the spatial difference between the moon and the uh, sun, and that's why you can have it completely covering up. I'm trying to do my Jamie Hyman uh, impression. Um, but yet, we have evidence that shows just the opposite. So, who's the liar here? Or the sun shrunk. <laughs> huh, well, there you go. I'll take that. That's just good enough. Or... Here's another possibility. The image doesn't come from SDO because it was taken three years before SDO was even launched into orbit. Instead, it comes from Stereo Behind, which was in the process of leaving the Earth-Moon system and had recently received a gravity assist from the Moon on its way out. I calculated the trajectory of Stereo Behind using ORSA. ORSA accounts for the gravity of the planets and even the Moon on the spacecraft, which is important because initially it received a gravity assist from the Moon on the way out. Now, by February, it gets quite far from the Earth and Moon, and eventually it breaks free of the Earth's gravity and starts trailing behind the Earth in a solar orbit. When it sees the Moon passing in front of the Sun, it's quite far from the Moon, and so it sees the Moon as being much smaller than what SDO sees. SDO remains in geosynchronous orbit around the Earth. In the next view, I'll show directly what Stereo Behind saw from its perspective, positioning the camera at that point in space and looking towards the Sun. So here's what ORSA predicts stereo behind it should see from its position in space. And now I'll show you what it actually saw. Notice that these are the same time points and same time steps, and it's a perfect match. The moon transit occurred exactly as predicted. That solves this mystery.
Please subscribe to my channel, Astronomy Live, for more in-depth analysis of mysteries like this. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.